Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us and tuning in for our Good Friday message. I know this word is going to tremendously bless you, and as God is going to minister to each and every one of us through His word, I know that we, our lives will be changed and we will never be the same. We are commemorating the death of our Lord and Savior on this Good Friday. And so let me take time out to wish you, first of all, happy Good Friday. And as we commemorate what Jesus did for us, yes, we know that it was a gruesome death that he died on the cross, but we know that because of that death that Jesus sacrificed for us, we have eternal life and we have an abundant life. So happy Good Friday and remember the reason for the season. So today, family, I'm going to get into the Word and I want to speak to you a little bit about what Jesus went through leading up to the cross. I'm going to talk about the crucifixion and when Jesus actually died on the cross. And then I want to talk to you about what happened after the cross. I'm going to spend most of my time, though, on the first two points, which is leading up to the cross and the crucifixion. What happened after the cross, I'm going to deal with on Sunday morning. But before we get into the word, let us bow our heads and let us pray as we commit the service to the Lord. Father, thank you so much that as we study your word once again, Lord, that revelation knowledge will come from your word. Father, that we will not be hearers only, but we will be doers of your word. Your word is active. It's alive, bringing change to our hearts. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will think through my mind that you will speak through my lips. And I thank you that each and every person that hears this message will be touched, changed, and will be ministered to in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are going to be looking at leading up to the cross. We're going to spend a lot of time in Matthew 26. Chapter 26 is where Matthew records a lot of what happened during the crucifixion and also leading up to the crucifixion. And we find that Jesus just got through teaching to crowds, various crowds, and he taught in parables, and he taught a lot of people. And then in Matthew 26, he tells his disciples that he will be delivered up, and he will be crucified, and he will die. A whole lot of events happens, and in verse 6 of chapter 26, is Jesus finds himself in Bethany, at the house of Simon the leper. And at this house, he meets a woman who anoints him. She takes this flask of fragrant oil, very expensive oil, and she pours it over the head of Jesus. This oil was held in an alabaster box, and an alabaster jar, excuse me. And when she pours it over the head of Jesus, we find that the disciples were very upset about this. In fact, they said, how could this woman be wasting all this fragrant oil? This is expensive oil. It could have been sold and it could have been given to the poor. Jesus then says to them, leave this woman alone. The poor you will have with you always, but I'm not going to be with you always. We also find in chapter 26, we find in verse 14, where Judas agrees to betray Jesus. He goes to the chief priests and he agrees that he would portray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time when he agreed to portray Jesus, Judas was always looking for an opportunity to portray Jesus. We, found, we find further down in the same chapter, chapter 26 of Matthew, verse 21, Jesus then has the Passover meal with his, his disciples. And at this Passover meal, he tells them that one of you that's eating with me will betray me. And of course, all of them are sitting there and they, they're saying to Jesus, who is it? Is it me? Am I going to be the one that's going to betray you? And Jesus says to them, the one who dips his hand in the bowl with me, he is the one that's going to betray me. We also find then further on as they were eating this meal, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, what we today know as the Lord's Supper. And how he does this is Jesus takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to his disciples. And he says to his disciples, 
take this and eat for this is my body he also then took, takes the cup and he gives thanks to God and after giving thanks he gave it to his disciples and he says drink all of it for this is the blood my blood the blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins a little bit further on Jesus continues and he tells them and he says one of you are going to also deny me in verse 31 of Matthew 26 Jesus says this he says then Jesus said to his disciples all of you will be made to stumble because of me and Peter answered and said to him even if all are made to stumble because of you I will never stumble and Jesus says to him assuredly I say to you that this night before the rooster crows you will deny me three times and then Peter says to him even if I die with you I will not deny you and guess what family all his disciples said the same thing even though you die and we have to die with you we will never deny you Jesus then goes through this mental pain mental torment mental ordeal where he goes to the garden of Gethsemane and he takes three of his disciples with him he takes Peter he takes James and he takes John three of his very closest friends he takes with him as he goes to the garden of Gethsemane to pray he asks his disciples the three of them he says go with me to the mountain but stay here I will go a little bit further and stay here and pray keep watch intercede for me pray for me and he goes a little further onto the mountain and he goes and he spends time with God and this is what he prays he says to them my soul he says to his disciples my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death stay here and pray and as he goes a little bit further he prays to the father he says father if it is possible let this cup pass me by nevertheless not my will but your will be done the Bible says that Jesus was sweating and his sweat turned into drops of blood and this is the agony and the and the pain the torment the mental torment that Jesus went through you see family it's not always just about dying on the cross we have to understand all the events that led up to him eventually dying on the cross and then he says to his, his disciples, the three that went with him, he comes down from the mountain and he finds them sleeping. And he says to his disciples, could you not keep watch with me for even just one hour? And this happened three times as he went up and he prayed, spent time with the father. He comes back and he finds his disciples sleeping. So in the garden of Gethsemane, we find that Jesus is eventually arrested. Judas agrees with the high priest and with the army that he would betray Jesus by kissing him. The one that I kiss, Jesus, Judas says, is the one that you should arrest. And so he comes with the army and he goes to Jesus and he kisses Jesus. And that was a sign for them to arrest Jesus. Immediately Jesus said to Judas, he said, friend, why have you come? Notice how Jesus still calls Judas friend. You see, Jesus doesn't walk around with grudges. He knew what Judas was there to do. But yet, he still calls him friend. Jesus eventually then is brought before Caiaphas and the council. And they brought many false accusations against Jesus. You see, friend, they wanted to sentence him. They wanted to put him to death. And as Jesus is standing before Caiaphas, he is absolutely silent. He is not defending himself. And this baffles the council. This baffles Caiaphas. And eventually, Jesus 
is then taken away to, 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 to be delivered to Pontius Pilate. So what had happened in the meantime is on three occasions Peter was spotted. First of all, he was spotted by a girl that recognized him as one of Jesus' followers. You were with him, she says, and, and Peter denies it fervently. Again, on a second occasion, another girl spots Peter and says, I'm sure I've seen you with Jesus. You are one of his followers. Again, Peter denies it. On the third occasion, a crowd of people sees Jesus, sees Peter, sorry, and again, they recognize him as being one of, of Jesus' followers. And Peter actually gets upset and he denies Jesus a third time. And as he denies Jesus a third time, a rooster crows. And this then fulfills the prophecy, exactly what Jesus said, before the cock crows three times, you will deny me. And that is exactly what happened. When we continue reading, we get to chapter 27 of Matthew. We find that Jesus is then brought before Pontius Pilate. He's brought before Pontius Pilate, again, with various accusations hurled at him. None of these accusations, of course, were true. We find also that Judas, the one that betrayed Jesus, he was very, he became very remorseful when he saw that Jesus was condemned. And he went and he went to the chief priest and he said, listen, um, I've, done, I've, I've sinned, I've, I've accused the wrong man. And the chief priest didn't want to listen to him. And so he wanted to give back the 30 pieces of silver, but the chief priest didn't want to accept that. He's already gone and portrayed Jesus. And Judas, we find, goes and he hangs himself out of remorse. And so on a certain day, it was custom for the governor to release a prisoner to the crowd. And so they brought out to the crowd Barnabas. He was a notorious prisoner. He was a murderer. And Pontius Pilate asked the crowd, who do you want me to release? Do you want me to release Jesus? Or do you want me to release Barnabas? And the crowd held and they shouted, release Barnabas. And so eventually, although Pontius Pilate did not want to do this, but he hands Jesus over to the crowd for them to do whatever it is that they want to do. And so Jesus endures all these lies told about him, all these false accusations that has been brought against him. Jesus endures betrayal. He endures abandonment, rejection, loneliness, and ultimately, he also endures physical death on the cross. And so this was all leading up to the cross. Jesus hangs on the cross as a common thief between two robbers. And so eventually, as Jesus is hanging on the cross, he's been tortured the in entire day. He's been insulted the entire day. He's been spat on the entire day. He's hanging on the cross. And eventually, Jesus says, Eli, Eli, Labach Sametani. And this means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when Jesus said these words, it was the God, the Father, that turned his back on his own son. Because you see, the Father cannot be in the presence of sin. It's at that moment where the sin of the world was placed upon Jesus. And so God could not look at his son with all the sin that was poured on him. And Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there was a desperate time of loneliness that Jesus experienced because his father, whom he knew and whom he knew throughout eternity, has for the first time not been able to look upon his son. Jesus cried out with a loud voice once again, 
And then Jesus healed the spirit. You see, friend, it's very important that you and I understand that Jesus gave up his spirit. The devil could not kill Jesus on the cross, but Jesus healed his spirit. So at that time when Jesus healed his spirit, we find that the veil, the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. And this was very significant. Because you see, when we look at the Old Testament, we did not have direct access to God. Sin separated man from God. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he made it possible for us to enter into the presence of God again. So where was Jesus for three nights when he was crucified and he died on the cross? Well, let's have a look at Matthew 12 verse 40. I'm reading from the New King James Version. As for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You see, according to the scripture, Jesus was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, which is where hell is. Colossians 2 verse 13 and to 15 says, When you were dead in your sins and you were uncircumcised in your flesh, God made you alive with Christ and he forgave all your sins. And having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, you was taken away, nailed to the cross, and having disarmed the principalities and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, trying, triumphing over them on the cross. So Jesus, in fact, went into the belly of the earth, and that is where he defeated the devil and all the principalities and the powers. And so the power of sin and death was there broken. So family, as Jesus led up to the cross, died on the cross, and eventually died, he spent time, he went into hell, and he defeated the devil there. There was a great reward. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 29, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters and we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about it on sunday what exactly did jesus death on the cross buy for you and for me as we accept him as our lord and savior so it's very important family as we celebrate good friday it's not all about easter eggs it's not all about the meals the pickled fish the hot cross buns it's about understanding that jesus laid down his life in the most horrible way it wasn't just a physical torment there was emotional torment that went with it as well and remember that although jesus is god when he was on earth the bible says he laid down his godliness and he came to earth like a man so he felt pain he felt emotions he felt anguish as we saw when he prayed in the garden of gethsemane and Jesus went through all of this so that you and I could be set free from sin and death. Today, there is no more appropriate day than to invite you to pray this prayer, the sinner's prayer with me, to give your heart to the Lord and to become a born again Christian that will serve and live for God from this time or this moment onwards. So I'm going to invite you. Why don't you bow your head and close your eyes as I'm going to lead you in the prayer. Now, if you pray this prayer after me and you really mean it in your heart, the Bible says you are born again. So why don't you pray this prayer with me? Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. Today, I admit 
that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Come into my heart and save me. I repent of all my sins. Thank you for washing me clean. Amen. Now friend, if you've prayed that prayer, you've just invited Jesus to come and live inside of you, to be your Lord and Savior. Today you are born again. This is the greatest thing that you can ever do in your entire life, is to accept Jesus. You see, his death was not in vain. His death was with you on his mind. And he, as he was hanging on that cross, you know what kept him there, family? It's his love for you and for me. So I want to congratulate you. And I want to let you know that God loves you tremendously. That he would send his only son to die on the cross for you and for me. So enjoy your Good Friday. Enjoy your friends and your family. And remember, Jesus is the reason we celebrate Good Friday. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday.